How many of you have ever eaten at Wendy's? Oh, it's a loaded question. Most of us have. Uh, before Dave Thomas was doing his big commercials and before Clara Peller did her ones on Where's the Beef, the thing that put Wendy's on the map that a lot of people don't know was another commercial they had. It had a slang word in it. It was, ain't no reason to go anyplace else. They had an internal slogan that is really what made the difference. That was one that made sense because they were the first drive through uh, first uh, uh, fast food restaurant east of the Mississippi that had drive through windows. Yes, before McDonald's. Yes, before all the rest of them. They had a salad bar. They had chili. They had the Frosty and they had the hamburger. So they were serious. Ain't no reason to go anyplace else. But internally and behind every counter and every training session, they had a separate slogan. Don't give them any reason to go anyplace else. Isn't that a great slogan for your organization? We don't want our members going someplace else. We don't want them dropping out for this reason or that reason because of how we treat them, how we deal with them, and it makes all the difference in the world. Well, sometimes it's just making their day. Every Saturday when I'm in town, my wife gives me a honey-do list. And it includes going to the bank and going to the post office and going to the cleaners and sometimes includes something else. This one particular nasty Saturday morning, she gave me the job of going to Lowe's to get a particular light bulb. Now, I have changed over 10,000 light bulbs in my house if there's been one, but I'd never seen this one. She gave me the bulb itself. She checked out the serial number, gave me that so I couldn't screw up the job. I went to Lowe's, never having been there. This was many years ago. Didn't realize it was big as a football field, walked in the front door, what do we find when we go to any big box store, whether it's Walmart or Lowe's or Target, first thing we see are the carts, and what's next? The greeter. There she was. Nice lady, big smile on her face, said, could I help you? I said, yeah, I think so. Could you show me where I could find a light bulb just like this one? She said, could I see it? I said, sure. She took it out of my hand, looked at that, studied it, shook it, handed it back to me, and with a big smile on her face, she said, Sir, I'm terribly sorry to tell you, but we don't sell burnout light bulbs. <laughs> now, was she that, that fast of a thinker? Had she used the line before? Was she a comedian on the side? I don't know, but I do know this. I know unequivocally and beyond any reasonable doubt that I never went back to the other home improvement store next door. I continue to go there, and she's long since gone. We never know what it's going to be. Matter of fact, i got a question. How many of you love getting your driver's license picture taken? Oh, that's a loaded question. I don't usually get too many people that like that one. How about seven states in the country give you four poses? Now, I share this because even in the public sector, we're in a position to have public sector associations use creativity, use little things that make us feel good. And that's what we're saying, making our coworkers feel good, making our members feel good. It can happen in so many different situations. You probably see this up here. This is a 10 minute timer. When I was in sales, I used to use it as a way to get in to see the boss via a cold call. I set that down on the receptionist's desk. I said, very simply, could you uh, share this with Mr. Jones? and tell him I'd like to share that much of his time. Amazingly enough, it got me in time after time. Today, I use it in management as a time management tool because when a salesperson calls on me and I feel it's worth us taking the time to at least hear their story, I tell them, I've got a timer when you come here. It's 10 minutes and you need to condense your story into 10 minutes. They accept that opportunity and when they get there, that baby is sitting there for sure. It's an amazing thing that little ideas pay big dividends. How can we get creative even though we were not born creative? That's really the key, I believe, to being able to get our members to love us, to respect us, to feel good about us, to talk positively about us. It happens in so many different, different situations. Uh, you may send some more emails, some emails that say thanks for doing this, appreciate your going that extra step, and doing more of that than ever before. But I have a big hang up about emails. I get about a hundred legitimate emails a day. About half of them either have no subject line on them, which in turn, by the way, if you didn't know, if you send a subject line, I mean send an email with no subject line, it's going to come across to the recipient as you've received some, it says no subject. We don't realize. We never put that in there. But if you don't put one on there, that's what the recipient's going to get. At the same time, we get document names. Intro.doc, agenda.doc, 436974.jpg, which is a photo. We've got to identify these things much more specifically so that the recipient looks at us in a positive way. And that's really what we're talking about. How can we be looked at in a positive way across the board with our coworkers and our members?